Lily, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I know a lot of our listeners and viewers and just people in general have been asking me, hey, Ruslan, can you can you guys please have a nurse on? Um, I'm in nursing school or I want to get into nursing school or I'm thinking about nursing and I have questions um, and they haven't asked a nurse. So I'm glad um, that you're here today to answer some of these questions. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you for having me. You got it. Um, so, Lily, you are not from California. Mm-hmm. You were actually moved from Georgia. Georgia, Out- specifically, what city? Uh, uh, Canton, outside of Atlanta. Outside of Atlanta, Canton, Georgia. What made you move down to California? Uh, so I uh, met my husband from that, who's from California, and him mm-hmm. and his family. Um, we met through a friend who was living on the East Coast, also. Her and her husband, well, she, after they got married, they moved yeah. here. And then my husband and I met through their weddings. And I moved here um, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. Nice. So about eight years ago. So, so eight years ago, you moved to California. <laughs> and were you pursuing nursing in Georgia w- when you were in school already? Or did you decide to do that in ca- once you moved here? How, how did that happen? I was pursuing um, in Georgia. That was mm-hmm. um, my goal was to finished my bachelor's in Georgia and um, I was on like the the path for it um, and some things kind of changed the schooling the program that I got into there um, did not work out mm-hmm. um, I actually moved away from home to l- pursue the nursing program but I just w- when I was there did not work out mm-hmm. um, I basically had to leave that program and uh, move back home but then uh, kind of all that led to me getting married moving here so I continued um, pursuing nursing here okay so the first question um, I'm, a, I'm gonna jump a little bit ahead of myself but because we're kind of on this topic you moved out of state basically to go to college because you were a resident of, of, of Georgia Mm -hmm. Um, When you moved to California, and this is just in case somebody's watching that's Mm -hmm. trying to move into California, when you did you have difficulties of going to school here, Um, or like applying? Is there certain rules? Um, Good question. Um, No, you can pretty much start schooling as soon as you come here. You can even um, apply to the to college, whether it's university or um, nursing school or community college, even before you move here or become a resident. Um, So that's actually what I did. I actually placed myself on the wait list for a nursing program probably a year before I even moved here, knowing that there's like, there's the chance of me moving here in the future. And Mm -hmm. it's an easy, it was an easy, where I literally just put my name on the wait list Uh, back then, (laughs) back like 10, about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, So I didn't have to go through much. So I did that and then um, I moved here and within... um, Basically, all I had to do was just change my last name mm-hmm. for me to go to school and have my pro- like my correct documents, ID. an ID, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I just paid, I was just out of state considered for the one year from the time I changed uh, my documents to California, like mm-hmm. my especially my license, to one year from that time. So it's not really from when I moved, it's from when I changed all my documents. Okay. So was year. it more expensive because, were you paying an out of state tuition? Outstate, out okay. of state tuition. Um, I wasn't taking very many classes, and I don't remember that it was very much. Okay. I don't remember at the time. Okay. Um, but um, it was. It's probably maybe almost double the regular price of oh, wow. classes. I would okay. think, but it still wasn't that much because it was a community college. Um, back then, I think I was going to Woodland mm-hmm. Woodland Community College, so I was taking some of my. I had a few classes. Not left, but I had that I had to take for the programs here. I had okay. to. There was some class. A lot of my classes didn't count from Georgia, and a okay. lot, not a lot, but a few that I had to take okay, that, you had to that I didn't retake. have to take. Oh, you just Georgia. didn't have to take them there, yeah. but you did in California. There was a few here, yeah. So okay. thankfully, though, most of my classes transferred, and it, it um, like, oh. there wasn't that many that I had to take okay. or still cool, take. Cool, cool. That's nice because I know for some for some reason, some people have issues with. Mm -hmm. um schooling and stuff where and maybe for some schools it's much more expensive depending Mm -hmm. on the school they're trying to go to community colleges are not i don't think they're very expensive but i'm not sure about universities here i've never attended like an actual university here i did in georgia and it was different my tuition was paid um living with my with my parents so um and there they have grants that are like if you graduate with a certain um uh 
GPA in, in high school, you mm-hmm. get your tu- you get your four years of college tuition covered completely. Wow, that's, that's um, nice. I think it's like a 3.5 GPA, 3.7 or 3.8. I think it's mm-hmm. actually 3.7 or 3.8. It's not like 4.0, but yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like having some the higher and On the higher side. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Okay, so let's get back a little bit to nursing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you've been a nurse for how many years now? Uh, it's... Uh, about six and a half so six and a half years you started in mercy san juan if i'm not mistaken mercy general mercy general yep mercy general hospital you started mercy general hospital <clears throat> and now um in may you said um you started in kaiser mm-hmm. so uh, that's that's cool do you want to talk a little bit about sure. that uh so i started at mercy general as a mm-hmm. new grad um mm-hmm. the floor i was hired on was is uh, neurology so it's mm-hmm. a lot of stroke patients um brain trauma um brain tumors recently mm-hmm. um because it, on the unit whoever the doctors you're contracted with is the type of patients you're going to get so okay. uh just in the last year we started to be contracted with um surgeons who actually like work on brain tumors and take them out and and resect them and all that so we start to have more of those kind of patients too but uh, for a very long time it's stroke patients seizure patients as well so we would um actually monitor uh, new patients who just recently would start having seizures mm-hmm. um we would actually take them off off all of their like seizure medications we'd put them in a special room obviously we'd put like the leads on their heads um mm-hmm. and we would try to induce a seizure actually so the doctor can view like what's happening in their brain um so we would try to induce it so we wouldn't let it let them sleep we would have bright lights um and it would take days sometimes for them to have a seizure but we would induce it to um <laughs> this sounds, to, like, no. sounds like a oh, I know. like a like an <laughs> evil lab <laughs> But um, it's not anything like it doesn't hurt them at all. They okay. don't. They just the bright lights is the thing that we that we would do like very for a little bit of time. It's not yeah. a long time. It's like minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um. But these patients come in voluntarily to be monitored so they could figure okay. out like where their seizure what's, is coming what's from, going on? what part of their brain, and is it caused by um like a lot of times is it by a tumor or mm-hmm. just like what's the cause? Um, That's pretty interesting. But anyways, yeah. So neurology and um. The I started as a new graduate, but that unit, um, mm-hmm. they they basically just hire new gra- graduates. Um, this is the neurology unit I'm at Mercy General. It's been like that for many years. That's basically all they hire. They don't hire anyone with experience. Wow. Uh, for some reason, they just they they want you to um, basically they want to start you just get you as a fresh new grad. So they yeah, can yeah. really like teach you and instill everything that they want you to know versus yeah. um, you coming from somewhere else and bringing in your other experience your expertise, yeah. yes and being like okay well don't tell me what i don't to do. too uh, yeah or you're not doing this the way like i know how to do it yeah um so i was there for five years um, uh, about five years mm-hmm. and it was a great um and very challenging floor to um start on it was uh, i required a lot of physical endurance because a lot of patients would come in um after a stroke and a lot of times they'd be um half body paralyzed and a lot of times that would go away but Mm -hmm. sometimes it wouldn't but while they're there you'd have to reposition them every two hours um to prevent any like ulcers if you're laying in one spot for okay yeah two days straight you're gonna um start to have like your skin's gonna start to break down so Mm -hmm. we did a lot of like just um turning repositioning moving patients and there's special ways and lifts and things we use it's not just like myself um <laughs> i can't i mean I, looking at you i can't really imagine you lifting like a big old 250 yeah. year old guy but there's ways and it's actually pounds. not di- like it's not difficult at all i mean people get hurt but you anyways there's like the a right way to do it yeah. um so yes neurology so that was very um just a great first uh, like, as a new job new yeah let, let me ask you a, a quick follow-up question to the neurology do you have any stories from where maybe you guys did did some examine like somebody's issue why they were having seizure and like you figured mm-hmm. some some things out for yourself that, or maybe things that you learned? Mm-hmm. Well, one thing I learned, which <laughs> I didn't know before, but yeah. um, is some seizures they say are not real seizures they don't come from your brain that's what we monitor they mm-hmm. don't come from your brain they are actually like a psychological like where the person i somehow like mm-hmm. they which um there's just no brain waves indicating any seizure so the person um basically like i mean they 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 have this where they they think they're having a seizure and so they act 
like out and in they'll a lot of times they'll just stare into space for like five minutes you know that's that's their only their only sign of a seizure there a seizure is not always like where someone's like shaking how you typically wow. know yeah a lot yeah. of times just staring blankly at the wall or um it's just really a lot of times it's just that that's all so a patient has would, would you say so, that's more of like a mental yeah so that was really interesting because a lot of the patients actually came in um they i forget the proper name for it now but mm -hmm. basically it's not a it's um i mean we don't call it a not not a real seizure but there's yeah. another name for it's that. just a different type of seizure yeah it doesn't come from their brain though so basically it's not a seizure so like, that was really interesting to learn because basically these are patients that have um some kind of like mental um but again a seizure is not coming from the brain it's kind of hard for me to understand still but that's i guess i learned you know not all seizures are actual seizures there are yeah, patients yeah. that almost i don't I mean, they don't make them up. I'm not sure how they, you know, but it's something. That's 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 a really Anyways. cool topic. Maybe one day we'll find like yeah. a seizure pro that we can yeah. interview about that. But that's very interesting. I had no idea that not all seizures are caused in the brain. Yeah, our actual seizures. Our actual seizures. Okay, so you so you were for for five years. You were in this department. Mm -hmm. You were saying, and then. And then I recently started at Kaiser mm -hmm. um, Hospital and um, on a general, it's called medical telemetry. It's a mm -hmm. very common term, um, common unit that most nursing students will go to when mm -hmm. they're um, in nursing school. They'll usually just go to this unit because okay. it, you get like a variety of patients and it's mm -hmm. just a, a good floor to get like a little gist of every of everybody to mm -hmm. um uh, to kind of just to work with every kind of every sort of patient um, <clears throat> and here I've only been a few months or I guess four or five months um, and uh, we basically we have I mean it's it's a general unit so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyone from um, having like chest pain coming in um, and then not be it could be we could find that it's a heart attack or it could be just an abnormal rhythm, which can be controlled or changed by medication. Mm -hmm. um, so oh, I'm going to interrupt you real quick. So I'm imagining myself when I get accepted to the ER, mm -hmm. right? And the ER accepts me and then they transfer me to a room. They say, okay, mm -hmm. you're, we're going to admit you to the hospital. They put me in a room. Is that usually the telemetry? Um, it, or it depends on times, what you, what what you what you're. Yeah. So um, at this specific hospital, they don't have um, they don't have a heart unit like so. Where I worked, Mercy General, we had a um, actual cardiac unit. So all the anyone anything with anything related to the heart, mm -hmm. um, we had they had a lot of open heart surgeries. Patients that would go to their unit, they would have the surgery the mm -hmm. next day or that day, and then they'd come back to that unit and recover there. Mm -hmm. well, and then we had the neurology unit, and then we had um, the medical telemetry, which is like just everybody else that doesn't go into neurology or heart. Or heart but okay. at Kaiser, um, they actually don't have a heart unit and not really a neurology unit. They just, uh, they have like the labor and delivery, mom and baby, NICU, mm -hmm. ICU, and then they have three or four units that are medical telemetry. So, okay. and then our unit specifically is the one that's, um, basically like under ICU. So we have just a, more of the critical patients um, post surgery of especially, not surgery, post like any kind of procedures like um, taking taking where um, they go into your stomach and um, they literally just make a hole and drain some of the fluid out if they're having like, a, a lot of times they'll have that due to liver, a patient will have that due to like, if their liver is not functioning, they'll mm -hmm. start to have fluid build up in mm -hmm. their body, especially in their stomachs. Um, we'll have patients with the flu um that have gone into like sepsis which is uh it's a common term i think nowadays a lot of people anyways, nowadays everyone's sick with something yeah so flu like not just the flu like you're just you know you're just sick with the flu but um mm -hmm. these patients have gone into like the next step of it so after if you're sick and your body can't fight it off for whatever mm -hmm. reason you um the infection will go into your blood and then you'll have your blood pressure will start to drop your heart rate will be really high um you'll start to be like not with it anymore so mm -hmm. a lot of patients like that after the with the flu and with it goes into that already so not as um, not severe enough where they need to be in the yeah on on like watch and on machines the but not yeah. they can't just they're not just chilling in the room either yeah okay yeah so not like anybody that's on ventilators and um 
Um, we have we do have patients that are on the trachs, which are the little uh, basically the tubes that go right here, and um, they um, they basically like you, your oxygen is connected to it because for some reason they can't get air from their mouths to mm -hmm. their lungs. There's something in either there's blockage, either they've had surgery here with their um, with like their thyroids, their neck neck surgery. It's so but anyways. So post surgery. Um, all kinds of surgeries with okay. procedures with the heart um lung surgeries we have like uh our, um head and neck surgeries due mm -hmm. to cancer or tumor mm -hmm. um patients that come in with pneumonia like elderly patients that are not recovering from it okay. they're just sick and they're just getting worse um those are the few that I can think of. I but mean, it's a that's a lot that, of very general. So, like you were saying, yeah. sorry to interrupt. You were saying, so yeah, they go. So, a patient always, you know, comes to the emergency department, mm -hmm. and um, usually, I mean, usually they're yeah they're coming to telemetry unit. They're usually mm -hmm. not going to the ICU because they're if they're going through the emergency, like if they're someone's taking them to the emergency, they're probably stable enough to not have to go to the ICU. Usually, ICU is more of um, trauma, um, which we have. Um, Kaiser is. Um, known for like they have a trauma center it's a trauma center at kaiser South okay. Sacramento. like whereas mercy general was a um heart and stroke that was their thing so we okay. actually send a lot of patients for um with strokes and um brain surgery and heart and open heart surgery to mercy general so we're oh, okay. kind of like we'll send them there because that's where our doctor uh, the doctors from kaiser are contracted okay. with so yeah, so from the ER usually you'll go to like a medical telemetry unit most likely um if you're brought in like someone brings you in or you bring yourself and usually you're stable enough mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and if you're not having a baby <laughs> you'll go to the medical so you, you said a couple times um doctors are contracted to a certain hospital mm -hmm. and this has nothing to do with nursing but i just i'm i just have a question so so a, a hospital doesn't hire a doc i mean doesn't hire a doctor like they would hire a nurse they yeah. contract with say like uh, surgeons or, or doctors that are more sp like more say i'm a heart surgeon so this mm -hmm. is my expertise so yeah. you contract a doctor and like do you know how that works a little bit or uh, not too much but i from what i figured out is um because a lot of times well as a nurse we we do a lot of communication between like patients and doctors and mm -hmm. patients and um uh specialist so mm -hmm. cardiologist neurologist so on this unit it's more of cardiologist um which are uh, heart heart mm -hmm. doctors um and you'll call them and they'll say like can you remind me what this patient what his diagnosis is because you know i'm with like five hospitals so like remind me like what he's mm -hmm. there for remind me like you know they'll ask for their name their mm -hmm. not their mrn or their like id number for the hospital so um so that just makes me think um the specialists so all the like this where their specialties like mm -hmm. their surgeons or um they're basically they just work with a few hospitals and they'll have like they'll just pick up some patients in each hospital it's like a couple side gigs and Kaiser. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, but doctors yeah but then the hospitalists they're hospitalists so they're just with that hospital basically it's how i think okay of it. okay so we talked we talked about your uh mercy general experience in um uh, neurology and then now in telemetry mm -hmm. telemetry was just more general but at the same time kaiser you guys are more specified with with cardiac mm -hmm. and even though you also cardiac, get g yeah. g general general patients what's your let's go through like your typical day as a nurse sure. um so typical day is um so i arrive on shift at my shift is 3 to eleven thirty p.m mm -hmm. so i'll come um with kaiser you can't really work um until you clock in whereas um a lot of other hospitals I shouldn't say that, <laughs> but they know like they'll um you can come in earlier you can prep on your patient which means you go on the computer you look in their chart you write down all the information you need to know when their next medications are due like what you have to do at that during that shift if there's anybody you need to call like a doctor about something that you know whatever is going on but um with kaiser anyways you get there at 3 p.m um and your shift basically starts at 3 p.m we have a five minute like uh, where manager the manager talks to all of us he kind of just goes over some important things that happen during the day mm -hmm. things that we need to um, be aware of patients we need to be uh, like more on the lookout with um or really like pay attention more to whether they're not happy with their care or um 
they're um, more confused they've been getting out of bed all day and they're like they could fall yeah. um so just kind of like an update for, for just about five seven minutes and then um we go out of the break room wherever we have the meeting um and we'll find a nurse that has that had our four patients okay. um during the day we'll find them um sometimes it's a few nurses that have those four patients like mm-hmm. one has this room one has the other one room and you basically take report from them and this is like standard across any hospitals. hospital clinic it, it, basically you just um they just kind of like you've already you know a little bit about the patient if you look them up like their name their diagnosis mm-hmm. what their um plans are for the day or mm-hmm. the shift um <clears throat> like what you need what's your priority and what you need to do for them that day and then you and a nurse will just fill you in on basically like a little details like um you know how do they go to the bathroom like do they use the bedpan or are they can they walk to the mm-hmm, bathroom mm-hmm. um do they have any precautions are they on um like do they have a risk of falling if they fell, just recently fell or if they fell like if this is why they're here because they fell and they broke a bone mm-hmm. or if they have um seizure precautions you know are they if if there's if they're a patient that has just has chronic seizures then mm-hmm. they're on seizure precautions which means there's certain like things we pad like their bed and stuff so they'll just fill us in on like these details that you might have not found in oh, their like chart special right away medications or something? yeah special medications pain medicine like when was the last time their pain medicine was given and okay. we can see all this in their chart but mm-hmm. um just in those five minutes that we look at the patient's yeah, yeah. chart we don't like so they just kind of fill us in on the most important things um um just whatever we need to know family members if there's a family member that's um like not as helpful like you want to tell the next nurse like hey this family members like we'll ask a lot of questions about mm-hmm. this to so make sure you like educate yourself about that so they don't get like frustrated yeah, or yeah. um you know there's there's this family member or like this you know that's that like that the, so, so like the I'm imagining a nurse like running like googling a bunch of stuff, <laughs> a bunch of stuff. sometimes yeah because sometimes they'll be like okay the family member wants to know this and you have some time to like go in and you're like you know they're gonna like ask you all these yourself. questions yeah. yeah um or you just like um so yeah so they'll just then the previous nurses the previous sh- shift nurse will um just fill like fill me in on yeah basically the most important things and mm-hmm. we'll go meet the patient always or qu- we'll do this in the room so mm-hmm. like we'll go in and we'll say hey this is the next nurse is it okay if i just give her a report and mm-hmm. talk to her a little bit about you and you can add any um comments or anything that i missed um and so uh, and we uh, we look at their valuables belongings like things that's a Kaiser is important for them like hey they have dentures you know they're in the bathroom because when they leave we like they claim all of that so then yeah, yeah. it's just these a lot of little things that you know, like don't think about when it's nursing um or any kind of I think job yeah. or field um and then so then you start your day so usually you know you take vital signs right away you assess the patient mm-hmm. you you get a you just look at like you look at their baseline like okay mm-hmm. this is them so that you know in the next eight hours especially if they're a critical patient if they mm-hmm. have if their heart rate is, is high or um, they're there for a stroke, you know if there's any changes. So you're just constantly, um, so anyways, so medications and I uh, just look at them, I assess them, you know, listen to their heart, their mm-hmm. lungs, just the typical. Um, so I can be on the lookout for changes so that I okay. I need to have, a, I guess, a baseline. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so daily, daily, um, my daily day looks like. So it's um, really uh caring caring for the patient caring for the patient um so the duties include um obtaining like samples like blood um sometimes we'll take their blood sometimes somebody else will um blood um urine samples mm-hmm. if we're trying to figure out some you know um if they're Depending there for an infection patient. yeah then we're and they want you know blood then they want they they didn't have a we didn't get a urine sample yet so you're you know getting them a special stuff they need to like go to the bathroom if he and so you're reminding them and you're always always on the lookout um so samples and administering medications that's mm-hmm. like we do that constantly whether it's iv or um uh just by mouth um and we're our main thing is just monitoring the patient we're constantly like pretty much monitoring if we're not in the room monitoring them we're um outside looking at their heart monitors mm-hmm. or we're looking through their chart um to make sure there's nothing that we missed and we're also like a lot especially for the critical patients so um anyone that like that's that's just more sick like mm-hmm. we're um basically as a nurse i mean pretty much monitoring and then the main thing is um communicating communicating between patients and doctors and staff like we do 
I mean, pretty much I think what I do most of is you're communicating all the time, like to in between everybody. You're mm-hmm. like, because the patient, it's like their TV's not working. You know, you're calling the engineers. Um, their so you're like, you're like managing sick people. Yeah, you're basically like, you're called the primary care. Like you're, you're their primary care. So mm-hmm. you are the first like person who sees them. Mm-hmm. You're the first person who like notices any changes. Like, mm-hmm. because the doctors are not there all the time. They just come in once a day for, yeah. 10 minutes you know oh, really? but you're there you just, pretty much they come in everybody gives them a rundown nothing's they'll come too look crazy. at the patient yeah they'll come look at the patient unless it's like they're getting worse and um so you're like they're like you're you're like their first primary like so you're the one that to catch a change or the one to change um catch when they're um like doing worse like and you're you have the authority pretty much to like you're I mean, pretty much you, you're the one to call the cardiologist if you feel like um, their heart rate is higher. Mm-hmm. It's staying at a higher rate than it was normally. Mm-hmm. You're calling the cardiologist. You're letting them know. Um, you're sometimes recommending what they could do. Not really a Kaiser. They're really good about like, they know like you don't have to, advocate like hey i think you should do this a mercy was like the doctor should ask us like uh so what do you think we should do and you're like oh you're the doctor but (laughs) but you kind of have to have the answer so usually we would like prepare like okay they're gonna ask us so like we better know like if we're if we're calling them that like say like they're all of a sudden they're having blood in their urine like they're gonna ask us like well what what do you think we should do like and you're gonna tell them like what what test maybe to run you know what um so but not at kaiser they're really like they're ahead of you they're always a step ahead of you i feel like the doctors that's been really nice because you're just kind of like your job is just to let somebody know all the time um and then so caring for the patient getting samples um monitoring them and administering medications and then a big a big one in nursing that i didn't know that you do is um, education. You um, you do a lot of teaching with mm-hmm. um, the patient and their family. Mm, you are okay. constantly teaching. Um, you're teaching them about their diagnosis. You're teaching them about their medications, the mm-hmm. side effects of the medications. Um, you're mm-hmm. teaching them like for the future, like how to manage their care better. So if they're there for a stroke, like um, we have a lot of handouts, but we just kind of like every time you're in there, you're teaching them like about their you know the food they're eating mm-hmm. um their lifestyle managing stress um exercise because all those are like to prevent another stroke from happening mm-hmm. for instance because a stroke once it happens it, it's very likely to happen again within like two two years they say um so we do a lot of education and the other thing um that i again i didn't know is um most of our time is spent like charting so because basically they say because nursing and really any medical field okay job. I'm, I'm gonna interrupt i have no idea sorry. what charting is okay char- sorry I know <laughs> no that's things. fine charting is like me- you're documenting everything in the medical their medical records okay so, so you're putting on everything the computer. on the computer or whatever. yeah so like literally like every time you go in the room you document like that you went in the room mm-hmm. like anytime you know you empty their like your you know they went to the bathroom you like flush the toilet you're putting in you're putting that they went to the bathroom times one like that mm-hmm. one time um you're like so most of my time is spent um like documenting because basically they say because any medical profession job Mm -hmm. probably a lot of jobs really but from what i know it's like it's a very legal um it's very like it's it's a very legal like very legalistic yeah where you gotta make sure there's documentation for everything yeah and and everything's right and um like we even have like as nurses you have um liability insurance is pretty high and you pay it every you know year but mm-hmm. it's pretty high to cover if um you know if you're ever sued because any patient or family can come after the hospital mm-hmm. or the nurse or the doctor if they felt like their care was like not or, you know if someone died and they felt like something could have been done and it wasn't done so um we were always told like so with nursing the with the um document that i didn't know about or that how much of it was is that if you didn't like if you didn't document it and you didn't do it so whatever's not documented, you can't be like, oh, but I did that. Oh, I, I did that for the patient. Mm-hmm. Or I, I told them that. But it's like, well, you didn't document it. So you didn't, <laughs> so you didn't do it. Yeah. yeah. So in case of, it's all kind of a legal, like it really is just, it comes like whenever I'm, I'm documenting, I'm just in the back of my head, I'm thinking like, this is all like legal. Like I really have to like, as if like, can, if someone looks back at my charting or documentation, mm-hmm. their medical records, like years from now can my documentation show like all that I did for this patient that I did like all the right things. Or- and it's nice. I think also it kind of makes n- nurses be kind of more responsible yeah. maybe because they have to it's document very everything profes- they do. Yeah. It's you basically have to, it's very, it's a very professional job. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot more than just 
Uh, these are things that I've learned. It, just taking care of sick people. It's a, it's a really like a legal job, and mm-hmm. it's a lot of um, accountability, and um, just v- like you have to be, um, basically, it just like high integrity job. Like mm-hmm. you're, you know, like, and it helps you. Like if you're not like that outside of nursing, if you're not, if you don't, if you're not like a woman of integrity or a man of or integrity, honest. you can sometimes be dishonest or you can sometimes cheat. Like um, nursing will definitely, I think, like that will have a very positive aspect on your life, life yeah. really quick because that teaches you, like, vice versa. If you're if you're not already that going into nursing, okay. because it's just a very like, yeah, I mean, it you just use um, saying something wrong to a doctor, just you like. Exp- um, you know, telling them a, a, a heart rate the patient didn't have, even if it's like off, not but you know, by like by a little bit. If it's not could, the exact Yeah, it could rate. affect like the medication they prescribe. And mm-hmm. if you don't know it, then the medication could actually like, harm them or um the whatever else. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to really be um just like high just it's a very high that, I mean that that's awesome. It's nice to know that um I, I'm sure people listening and, and watching it's nice to know that you know there's there are these high standards yeah for people taking care of you you know that mm-hmm. i'm sure there's a maybe a couple bad apples or somebody's met a bad nurse or something but most yeah. of the nurses i mean most of the, all the nurses that i've mm-hmm. been like met or they're professionals that love their job and they love mm-hmm. taking care of their patients and they want to see everybody leave the hospital healthy yeah so that that that's an awesome that's awesome to hear that from you. Um, so we we talked a lot about the what what it is you do, a little bit your 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 mm-hmm. daily routine. Um, why did you decide to go into nursing? Is there did some happen in your life? Did you just research it and you're like, I like the medical field? Mm-hmm. What what made you choose this? Good question. Um, so I've I know you uh, you know some some people go into college not knowing what they want to do and yes. this is what this is, <laughs> this <laughs> to is help those about, yeah. <laughs> um but i actually knew pretty much from ever since you know you'd ask like a child like what do you want to be when you ro- grow up yeah, yeah. for me it was like you're one t- of those special kids that t- knew what they <laughs> wanted to do <laughs> and i'm not sure why at that young age i don't yeah. i'm not sure but I, for me it was always like a teacher or a nurse mm-hmm. um and yeah so since i was probably eight or nine and um as time went by <clears throat> I well, I'm actually like, I mean, the me- the healthcare it, to for me personally, when I have to go see a doctor or a dentist or anybody, yeah. it's like the scariest thing ever. <laughs> even now, <laughs> even now being a That's nurse, funny. and it's funny because like, um, you know, I don't mind like putting in IVs and mm-hmm. like, I, you know, you get a little like nervous if you don't do them in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, for like for myself, like, I'm like the patient that will like ask like <laughs> like to not have an iv like can yeah, i refuse yeah. the iv you know like when i'm having like a baby or something so i'm not kind of patient because i'm i'm just that's always like healthcare is just um just that's i think funny. the medical you're, you're like two totally yeah. different people yeah but when i'm like at work like when it's not that like it's just somebody else so i don't it doesn't scare me anymore but i mean but then it kind of makes me like understand like it is scary like it can yeah. be um it is really scary to be sick and it's mm-hmm. like it's scary to have to go um, see a doctor or stay in the hospital and uh, wait for results that mm-hmm. could be like cancer or it could be like right. something way worse than you think. So um, you think it may be. So it just kind of like, I'm not sc- scared to like do these things to like do the procedure people, but I like know how they, m- I can kind of like empathize a little more because okay. I am um, even to this day, I just, I don't know. I just have this like fear of like, um, not uh, for me personally like i don't you know of shots and um like dentists and just uh, just that like i don't know it's just just like but, um, the smell of the dentist and, <laughs> yeah. and all that stuff gets you all like nauseous. now i kind of know like how it's gonna what's gonna happen and how it's gonna be and yeah. kind of understand like the medications and things but um so anyway so growing up i um so that always scared me, but I don't know if it's just the challenge of like, okay, like this is like something that scares me. So I have to like, have it, to can, it convinced it. me that like, okay, like, and I really enjoyed just, um, just like learning about uh, the medical part of it. So like the body and how like the body works as I got older. Mm-hmm. And then I uh, also volunteered, which I know you probably asked me, <laughs> volunteered um, at a, like at a hospital and then before that at a clinic so that kind of really confirmed like okay this is what i want to do this is kind of like what i thought it would Mm -hmm, be like mm -hmm. um and then 
But the main reason, I guess, why for nursing specifically as I got older is I realized again, um, being sick is like, it's a scary place to be. Mm -hmm. Um, And as a nurse, I, because you're working with a patient constantly, you're in and out of the room, like Mm -hmm. sometimes every five, 10 minutes. So you, you really can make like a, a positive impact pretty much every single day whether it's like just teaching them something or whether it's um you meet people that uh like um even talking about god like at mercy general they're very catholic Mm -hmm. they're called i think they're trying to change their name to like catholic healthcare. Mm -hmm. so they're very like about like every evening the the hospital like intercom they'll read like a whole by a chapter from the bible Mm -hmm. um they'll basically like be like god bless you have a good night like yeah, type yeah, of thing yeah. at kaiser is different they're not like but um so Kaiser's not religious <laughs> I don't think so. but they're like so you can make a positive impact just well just okay first of all with pr- your presence because mm-hmm. you know when you're sick like it really matters who's taking care of you i yeah. think um you know it, it could make you really um nervous and more scared or it could kind of just relax you, you and make you feel ease. comfortable yeah. yeah um and just feeling like as a nurse you uh you basically add like you advocate for the patient all the time so communicating between the patient and doctor a lot of times the patient will like tell you like hey can you remind me tomorrow morning to tell the doctor this and i'll write it down and i'll mm-hmm. remind the next nurse if i'm not on shift because they'll either forget or they're too sick to like remember it the next morning mm-hmm. um or things they're worried about and they don't know how to ask the doctor so you're basically like okay, like this is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. You know, this is what you should ask about, Mm -hmm. um, about like whatever concerns, questions. So you're always kind of like, you're like always advocating for them, with them. And you're letting them know like, hey, um, you know, ask for this, like ask them this, like this may be important. Um, So just having, feeling like, so as a nurse, why a nurse? uh, Just having the, like knowing somebody is, um, kind of there like on your side yeah, and advocating yeah. for you so, and your health you, you said that um you knew you wanted to be a nurse since you were eight years old you always want to be mm-hmm. e- either a nurse or a teacher are there nurses that that get into nursing for the wrong reasons or or people that you know that went to nursing school got their degree got their job and they're like why am i here yeah i actually know a few people well, <laughs> you was, may know them too so but- why <laughs> <laughs> like what may, like what so, did they realize what, what yeah well i think a lot of like especially men they go into nursing not because they want to like really take care of somebody because i don't think i don't n- not that they don't have that but i think um for them it's more of like financially mm-hmm. um like the financial stability and the flexibility mm-hmm. of work which are the other two reasons that i went into it because even though i was eight i knew like okay one day i want to have a family i want to be a mom mm-hmm. um i knew i didn't want to work like full time monday through friday or five mm-hmm. days a week so when i looked into the schedule of nursing i from a young age i knew like you could work two days a week or three days okay. a week or you could work nights and be home you know work three nights and be home like four days and week, four yeah, nights yeah. yeah so um and then the pay but i looked it up when i was in georgia and the pay even in georgia was good but georgia is like pretty much one of the lowest states so to me that <laughs> really? was like good wow. like compared to you know getting your uh seven in georgia i think the um the minimum wage is like seven dollars and 25 cents yeah now in california chick-fil-a is paying like 15 yeah so. so when you when when i was looking at 24 dollars an hour i was like oh that's like really good like yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> like, yeah that is really like good for exactly. georgia you know so um yeah the flexibility so i the flexibility in the pay as well that was like on the the second like reasons not so important but pretty important mm-hmm. so i think a lot of people go into nursing for just those reasons um mm-hmm. and they don't well you can't really know how how challenging it can be like and physically exhausting because mm-hmm. i feel like you for nursing you have to have physical endurance because mm-hmm. you're a lot of it like because um a lot of times in a 12-hour shift i would like run like i would walk the entire time i would not i would not be able to sit except on my like scheduled breaks and even Mm -hmm. then i'm like i can't sit these 15 minutes like i have so much to do for 12 hours so it's just a lot of like physical physical endurance and um you get you can get worn out really easily that's plus the emotional mental part of it so a lot of people i think will go into it um thinking like either they go into it thinking like oh i can just make an impact and i can just care for these Mm -hmm. people and that's like pretty much where it ends but but it's much um, more they go that. into it yeah and they're like oh this is like actually not i don't even have time to to really talk to these people yeah, or yeah. take care of them because i'm so busy not like take care of them how i want to take care of them like right, they to may talk be, to them maybe imagining i get to sit on their bedside yeah. sing them a couple songs <laughs> yeah yeah you don't really book. like have the time to do that so like yeah. 
um yeah most of the time so we're gonna move into more than now the how can i part mm -hmm. and um i'll start off with um i mentioned a couple questions i mentioned on on our on our instagram that we will be interviewing nurses and one of the questions we got was what is the hardest part of nursing school mm -hmm. what was the hardest part for you of nursing school or maybe your friends that you know yeah that's a good question um <clears throat> so nursing school is the hardest part of <laughs> becoming a nurse okay first of all as people as the guy a lot of people ask about nursing school but um yeah it's um the hardest part i think is it's just it's like a very high demand and little time like um the expectations are for you are like they're like out of this world like really? they expect <laughs> really? like you to do and learn so much in such a short time in those like 18 months yeah i mean it's basically you go from prerequisites which you don't learn anything nursing related you mm -hmm. learn a lot about like physiology chemistry like things you're not always using kind of helps you to like understand medications but not really the actual tasks of nursing like mm -hmm. putting in you know catheters or ivs or medication or you don't learn that in prerequisites so nursing school you're just learning like everything you can ever know as like for, for specifically yeah. on your date for your daily work and nursing in about 18 months wow. so it's just a lot you go from like your whole life of just like what you think it is and then just this high demand of so like this podcast is definitely not enough time to learn about nursing well, that's okay i think it's good <laughs> <laughs> so like um yeah just the, like i just remember um well i did nursing school when i didn't have kids yet so mm -hmm. and even then i mean i wasn't as busy as um people who have kids and mm -hmm. are in nursing school but um it still was it was just like i mean you feel like you're just studying and learning like for 18 months straight um even on your breaks you're like preparing for the next yeah, yeah. and it's just a constant like it's never ending um wow like i can't so explain that it it's kind of hard teaches you some endurance when you become yeah. a nurse like it's just a lot like you're um you know you have classes and then you're in the hospital so you're having you're learning but then you're applying the next day mm -hmm. so you're learning like like you know written wise like mm -hmm. you're reading about something and then the next day you're already applying it mm -hmm. and then after you apply all that you come home you're having to like reflect on the the clinicals so you're having to like reflect and and write down all that you learned and uh, like whatever they expect of you and then the next day you may have like a test so it's like on whatever you learn two days before in your class that you had all day so i think it's just it's just like you, you don't get prepared uh during your prerequisites yeah, yeah. like in the time in the time management of like just i'm not sure why they make nursing school like that i don't to me it doesn't really make sense i think they could like i think i mean you could spread it out over three years and have the half the you know mm -hmm. work but i don't um yeah it's just it's like maybe it's like a, a little like a testing, like how bad do you want to become a nurse? I guess, yeah. It's a, like a vetting process, you know? I guess, yeah, because we had uh, where some people, like people usually will drop out the first or semester or two just because they can't handle, like, not that they're like not doing well, they just can't handle like the demand. It was no just life too for much for them. Months. Yeah, so, um, and really through nursing school, you really like your grades matter for like the short term like just um you know on this test to pass this class but at the end of it like once you're done with nursing school you don't have a grade for through nursing school like you don't it doesn't matter as long as you complete the nursing program like mm -hmm. that's all you need is like a certificate that you completed nursing program there's no like because it doesn't matter anymore oh, after the, for so the, the grades only matter to get into the school yeah or the, to the program so i was gonna yes yeah, suggest okay. like prerequisites are really like the like pretty important um i don't know about in california because a lot of it is some of it used to be waitlist um mm -hmm. like but i think i would still say that's pretty much if you focus on your prerequisites especially the physiology chemistry like the second third year um, okay. it would so, help you just to get in and once you're in the program mm -hmm. just to make it through but it really doesn't matter what your grades are in there because it's not really what they're not looking for like grades really it's more of like to learn to apply all these yeah things. okay yeah so someone's in high school right now for example oakmont high school has a great kind of like a medical program for students mm -hmm. high schools that don't have these programs what what can they be doing and they're interested in nursing mm -hmm. what, what do you think they can be doing to kind of help themselves out like special classes or yeah 
I mean, I, I don't even know. Honestly. Yeah, I would just like volunteer. Um, mm -hmm. Just do like once a week, like once a week at wherever you think you'd want to work or just like the hospital is probably the best place because you get like you see like the whole picture, mm -hmm. um, you know, at a clinic or at a dental office or oh, dental office. They don't have nursing. So like I actually volunteered at a dental office and it still gave me a little bit of like just the way like things run in healthcare, but mm -hmm. not really like what nurses do because they didn't have nurses <laughs> working teeth. there. Yeah. So um, I think volunteering because I'm not sure about classes. I don't think anything really prepares you like nursing school prepares you and really um, how your first job prepares you. Like I feel like you can't really ever be prepared through. It's really like you're never ready you have until to you're work. There. Yeah, you just ha like and so it's it's you don't I feel like you don't have to worry too much about like where you feel like you're ready because you'll never feel ready. Like even after nursing school, you won't ever feel ready. Wow. Um, and just volunteering. That's just very to, encouraging, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, that's just how, like, just to be okay with that. Like yeah. it's okay to feel like, like you're not ready. It's mm -hmm. okay. Cause I think, I don't think any um, student has ever, has felt, ever felt ready. ready. Not yeah. that, not that I've ever like talked to. So um, just to volunteer, I think it's just cause it gets your like perspective on nursing and healthcare mm -hmm. and, Okay, so, so what about like in college? If someone's in college, obviously you did most of your prereqs in Georgia. Mm -hmm. So you didn't really experience the California way, I guess. And, and you know, I'm sure there's going to be people watching that aren't just in California. Mm -hmm. Different programs work different, differently. In your case... For example, the program that you were thinking you were going to apply to, how did you know what prereqs to look or what your program, mm -hmm. what you needed for your program, what classes, you know, all that type of stuff? So in about like 12th grade, probably beginning of 12th grade, I, well, I went to high school, like I was in homeschooled, so I'm not sure how, because I know here a lot of people are homeschooled. So mm -hmm. um, I would, I think, well, a lot of times you'll have a counselor in high school that's, mm -hmm. that kind of talks to you about or to seek one out to talk to them about like what you want to do and to for them to kind of like let you know like what you need what classes you need to take in, in high school and start to kind of mentally prepare like okay um next year or the next two years like these are classes i should sign up for and then whenever you can already sign up for college classes by then you'll know or even right right before then it's fine too you just basically you would just go on the college mm -hmm. website that you're going to and find like prerequisite like you've it's pretty simple like you would find um just like nursing program and then it would tell you like prerequisites that you need okay so really it's just through the internet you find a school that you're you think you're gonna maybe do nursing through and then just research whatever they require to, yeah. to apply to their program yeah do you know any i mean do you know any schools or programs in california are they waitlisted are yeah. they lottery yeah how does uh, it work? So nowadays, I think um, I think all of them, the ones I know, are lottery. Um, mm -hmm. They the I went to Yuba College, which was still um, a waitlist, mm -hmm. and that was the only waitlist one that I found ten years ago. Wow, that's kind of why, like, because the other ones I wouldn't be able to apply for them with with it being a lottery yet, not, mm -hmm. not being not living here. So the mm -hmm. waitlist was kind of like you put yourself on the waitlist, and um, they basically within three to five years you would start. Oh, like the program. So you, you put yourself on so, the wait list and you're on the wait list for three to five years. Yeah. That so by insane. the time. Yeah. So I like so it was good timing because when I moved here, yeah. it was about another year. And then like for I finished my first year and I actually started at about two and a half years of being in the wait list. And I started like one year after I moved here. So it, was, it worked out perfectly wow. i didn't have to wait too long praise here god. i didn't I'm have to i'm glad it worked out yeah, yeah. praise god so Th that's crazy but usually now they're a lottery which um basically it gives everybody the same chance it doesn't even really matter on your grades or unless you go to um the only so the community colleges are lottery and they're mm -hmm. usually associate degree nursing mm -hmm. which um you know you can also do bachelors which um really there's no difference in between them bachelors is just a little bit more classes but the pay is um the same and the only difference, the other difference is with bachelors, you can go on further in, uh, in nursing. Like with an associates, you you can't, you have to get an, you have to get a bachelor's to if you want to move on to like being a, t a nursing educator, like a okay, teaching okay. nursing classes, but I, I, or something I, else. For, I don't know much, but I I do know that Kaiser requires nurses to have a higher mm -hmm. higher degree. Is that is that correct? Um, they like they don't they want 
they want you to have them one, but um, they they're willing for you to like to pay for you to get one while you're oh, working nice. with them. Okay. Cool. I think UC Davis is the only one that requires a bachelor's as of right okay. now. The other, um, all the other hospitals, they just want an associates. Okay, so you worked at two different hospitals. What's your experience like? W- someone that's looking, maybe they're in nursing school <clears throat> and they're looking to apply to different jobs. Mm-hmm. What's your experience like? What would you recommend? Obviously, there's a better hospital, like better mm-hmm. pay. But you were saying you liked how you started at Mercy General and mm-hmm. you liked the experience that you got there. It, it taught you a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So how would you? What would you recommend to a student get coming out of nursing school? Well, I would recommend. I mean, really, it's uh, it doesn't matter like where you start. It's like because you really just need one or two years in that starting job to move okay. on. Mm-hmm. So, which is not a long time and you don't have to work full time. Those two years, you can work very minimal and still have like where you're still, you still are considered like two years experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and you can always move on. Like once you have that one to two years of experience in a hospital though, mm-hmm. um, versus um, like a- Like a care facility? Yeah, like a care facility or, or Pretty much it's the only other one. Um, so it, any as long as you have like about one to two years. So it doesn't matter where you start, like mm-hmm. not to be, not to like really be like, okay, no, I just want to be here because I'm, that might be really tough because not all hospitals will um, hire new graduates. Okay. Um, like the only ones I know of is Mercy General Hospital mm-hmm. and Sutter, I think in Roseville. Mm-hmm. And Sutter and downtown, those are the only two that will hire new grads. Oh, so Kaiser doesn't even hire. Um, Kaiser, pr- pretty much, not that I've ever known. Kaiser is like one of, one of the hospitals that just don't don't hire new grads for wow. like at any time for any reason. That's um, crazy. so you're Sutter, actually see. the third person that I've in the past few days. You're the third mm-hmm. person that I know that moved from a different hospital to Kaiser. Yeah. Like as a nurse, which I'm just like, well, it's like the whole world moving to Kaiser. Yeah. Well, it's like, I think it's like the end goal for most people is to like, you want to get to like where it pays the most because right. um, you you don't mind where you settle in first, like yeah. as your first job, because you don't know how it's going to be and you don't, you don't mind like, and when they tell you what the pay is, you're like, you're so thankful for that pay you know right. you're, you don't think like oh well there's another hospital could be this isn't fair I yeah wanna get- you're like you're like shocked at the you know at the good pay because you're like new you don't like you don't know really like how yeah. exactly how much uh you know so what someone you're makes. telling these students is be grateful so, <laughs> get a job and, <laughs> and be it's okay grateful. to start be somewhere. anywhere yeah just start somewhere especially in a hospital if that's where you want to be mm-hmm. um or if you want to do any kind of acute like acute care means hospital care mm-hmm. or icu or like and from the hospital, you can always get experience elsewhere, mm-hmm. um, moving down to like a clinic. But most people, I mean, most people wouldn't like wouldn't do that. So just like I would just, you know, go any get in anywhere that you can, and then you yeah. can always transfer very soon after. You don't have to be usually. You don't have to dedicate yourself to that job for very long. Okay. Like they don't ask that commitment of you. They know you're a new graduate. Yeah, you're just starting out. You're probably gonna leave them like pretty soon. They kind of are aware of that. Mm-hmm. They don't expect you to stay some, at that okay. first place for a long time. Um, okay, so you, you you mentioned that care facility does not give you the same um, experience. If let's talk a little bit about that. So back in my life, I used to be a medical technician when I mm-hmm. thought I wanted to do medical, which mm-hmm. I definitely glad <laughs> I didn't do because I hated it. <laughs> um not that i don't like taking care of people i'm just like like just feeding like i was one of those guys that you were talking about like i loved hanging out with these old folks and chatting and having a good time but like the the document like documenting the pills and like all this pills and medicine stuff Mm -hmm. i'm just like dude i can't do this for the rest of my life yeah i so (laughs) i'm out of there but you you were saying it's it's doesn't count as acute care Mm-hmm. Do you know any examples where people thought they they were hey I'm in a met, I'm in a I'm in a care home and I'm a, I'm treating people I'm doing first aid or whatever you know because mm-hmm. you can't do much anything else there mm-hmm. I mean that's that sucks if somebody spent years in a, yeah. in a care facility and they think they have experience yeah so like because basically acute like hospitals acute care mm-hmm. and um a care facility there's no, there's another term for a care facility I mm-hmm. forget what it is now but it's basically like chronic care so chronic means like uh, chronic is something like um, you're there because you broke like your hip, mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and you're you're having to recover and it's going to take you like three to six months you go to it's called a nursing facility like, like a, rehab. a skilled nursing facility so like if you can imagine somebody who just broke their hip and they're mm-hmm. pretty fine they're and they don't have any other issues they're just having to like they need help with walking mm-hmm. or turning or um they need pain medicine mm-hmm. so it's like chronic like they're there they're not it's nothing urgent it's nothing emergent it's nothing like it's an issue, but it's not so. They just need so, help with like their daily tasks. Yeah, basically, yeah, nursing facility. That's basically you're helping patients with like just their daily tasks, and they don't stay there for a long time. But they go there after. Like we have a lot of our patients that are discharged either home or to a skilled nursing facility. Mm-hmm. It's like okay. the place they go to to ha- still have a little bit of care, but they don't need this like invasive and critical like care that I they know get some, in the hospital. Some skilled or some nursing homes have like a dementia department Mm -hmm. where where i mean it makes sense where these people shouldn't be in a hospital because there's nothing uh, not much nothing no no care internally Mm -hmm. that anybody can do they just need help with their day-to-day stuff and so that's why it's um usually like i have friends that have worked there because they Mm -hmm. couldn't they didn't like find a job in the hospital and they'll work there but a lot of them they knew like this is not hosp- they're just there because they needed a job but they mm-hmm. knew like it would not that would not qualify so um but you can but you would just start out pretty much kind of like a new graduate if you went from a um nursing facility to okay. the hospital you would be considered like a new graduate so people basically go to nursing facilities if they can't find a job so that's like the just the closest thing to keep them in a medical and yeah. environment or they failed their nursing school and there's no way other way yeah. they got to drop back and no oh, yeah. offense they have now they're they stuck in a facility work. home yeah well or, they yeah not not work as a nurse but like work somewhere else because yeah, yeah. as a nurse you have like you get a license after mm-hmm. you pass nursing school so then yeah you could work some okay like, uh, so um but it's not a bad like fo- foot in the door like because it does expose you to what nursing is and you get to manage patients care mm-hmm. which is what you do at the hospital so it's not a like if if um you know it's not you frowned go, upon yeah, like you can do that and then you can always like you can always, you know, go to a hospital, mm-hmm. but it'll just it'll be just as hard to find a job then as it was for you as a new graduate. Okay. Basically. I mean, so now that you say that you do develop skills like communication skills yeah. and asking asking the patient like yeah. how they're feeling and, and what you give they them want. medications, you like you do like I would say like 50% of what you do in the hospital. Okay. So. Okay. That makes sense. Um I'm not interested in nursing, so I can't really think of any more, <laughs> any more questions. Is there anything else maybe that you think that would be important for a student to know or somebody looking into nursing? Um, so, <laughs> not really. I mean, if not, then I think we covered all the bases. <laughs> yeah, not really. Um, just that it's it's not just taking care of, like, you think, like, you're just taking care of somebody, like, you know, yeah, when they're yeah. sick, it's... Like there's a lot more to it. You're doing like you're just you do a lot of communication between a lot of people, mm-hmm. and um you do a lot of documenting. So if it's it almost sometimes feels like an office job. Okay. With just half with of the time you're like you're you know with the patient, but yeah, half yeah. the time you're like documenting and you're on the phone and you're um, paging doctors and you're waiting. So I bet some that, people so. do think that it's either all just hanging out with the patient or other yeah. people do or other people might think that it's all just like giving people ivs and yeah d- drugs and all this stuff but yeah. actually there's a more of a balance like you were saying yeah you notice that you actually teach the patients a lot mm-hmm. teach teach the patient's family okay so g- quick question actually that i just got what is the most annoying thing or like if i'm coming into a hospital and mm-hmm. i'm a family member of a patient Mm-hmm. what what do sh- what should family members not do like what gets a nurse <laughs> mad um well not like mad but just kind of like irritated um, yeah they well um they'll like speak they'll like speak for the patient like the mm-hmm. patient will be like um they'll be like i'm not a, like i have a little bit of pain but i'm not like i don't want any pain medicine mm-hmm. but the family will be like all of the family will be like no like you, you you need to take it like look at you like you're in pain like look at his face he's in pain and you're like yeah. okay but he can like he could speak for himself like as when like since he can't speak for himself right now like you we'll, know kind of like let's talk to him yeah no kind of get like mad at him or the patient you know for not like they think he's not telling the truth and sometimes yeah. they're not but it's like you, i can't force them and i don't want to force somebody to take pain medicine like yeah. that's not always the best thing either you know to yeah. take pain medicine so um and then 
that, that i mean that's other that's a pretty things, good example yeah other things like so um a lot of times like patients they don't they like they understand where the primary but then they'll really take it to the next level of where like where it's like hey like um you know this pa- like my mom or whatever has been waiting for the surgery for like five hours like why isn't she being taken yet mm-hmm. and they'll like get really mad at you and they'll like be like they'll think like they'll be like this this care like guys are just These so bad are because, not good yeah they're like she's a priority like you know like the other day i had a patient and the um the mom and the i think friend they're like she's a priority like she has to have this procedure done and then i call we're waiting for the cardiac lab so mm-hmm. like the lab that goes through the vein into your heart and they like mm-hmm. you know look at your heart and let's like see what's going on and um i called them and they had like a, a trauma and then they had um like someone with a heart attack and so they took the place of this patient going in even though mm-hmm. she was supposed to go in next mm-hmm. so we have like it's by priority you know and i like let the patient know like and the family and the friend um like you know like i apologize you know like i'm sorry like yes you were supposed so to be taken like the bad there's guy. some priority like that came in and they like have to go first like mm-hmm. that's just how it works but they'll kind of get mad at you like well why is not or like why isn't the doctor or like doctor you you can't get a whole doctor you page them you're waiting an hour two hours and a lot of times you can go like higher like to the higher you know supervisors to get mm-hmm. a hold of them somehow but um like they'll get because you're the one that they see like they'll be like oh like how come like why why is a doctor not ordering this, these things i'm okay. like well i haven't talked to them yet like i can't get a hold of them you know yeah, yeah, yeah. um so kind of like they did basically like anything that they know is like needs to be done or a test or anything they'll like kind of get mad at you like they'll like question you like yeah, why yeah, yeah. are they not down there yet i mean why do, are they do like you, not do you understand why the family yeah is i doing get that the, yeah <laughs> And I, 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 I totally imagine, get it. I, yeah. I imagine you do, but the, so I try I, to be is, really sympathetic. Like, yeah, because what it sounds I like totally there's not much you it. can do about it. Yeah, so it's a lot of t- like that's the thing with nursing is um, like not everything is in your control. You're working with a lot of people, like outside of just yourself. You're talking mm-hmm. to a lot of people, and you have like the you're waiting on on, on doctors, and you're waiting on orders, and you're waiting on like certain medications to be ready. Mm-hmm. So like people, people, but they'll ask you like, hey, like why I need my pain medicine? Like it's not here, and they'll get frustrated. And it's like. I'm like if I could go down to pharmacy and like make it myself, like I would, <laughs> I would. but like I can't. Like I have to, you know, we have to wait for it. Like I'm not yeah, sure yeah, what's yeah. here. So kind of like it's not a frustrating uh, thing. I think it's more frustrating like for myself because I'm like I wish I could ha- like do something about it, but I just like it's out of my hands. But yeah. I don't ask for like family members frustrated. I mean something that irritates. I can't really I, like at the moment. I can't think of anything that's in, like very recent. Okay. Um, I don't know like i can but that's i think i don't find a lot of things very like irritating because mm-hmm. with um family or patients because i like i don't know i have like empathy for them because i get it like i kind of like can put myself in their sho- shoes yeah. and kind of get them and i get like their questions and their why they're angry about certain things and why mm-hmm. they're like feeling certain things about things like i so i don't find a lot of things too irritating um you understand they're in pain they're trying yeah. to help they're trying to help and you're trying to help yeah so the only people um that are the hardest to work with for me are um homeless people we got a lot Mm -hmm. um especially at mercy general i think the the location of the facility Mm -hmm. and the insurance that they would take so every hospital is like they take different insurances Mm -hmm. so um you know kaiser's only contract with kaiser patients Mm -hmm. pretty much pretty much there's some medical but like not very much so homeless like they're uh for me it's the hardest that's the most like where it's like frustrating because um, they really like want to eat and they like like to eat, which I understand. But um, they will call you like every five minutes, probably like, mm-hmm. you know, using their call line. And you'll see like every five minutes um, for like a snack. Like, oh, can I get graham crackers five minutes later? Like, can I get some juice five minutes later? Like, so that's really hard it's because like you're constantly like, um, so that's probably for me, like homeless people are the, are the ones that like the, are the hardest to work with because then on top of that, they'll have um, some like, me- like they'll, um, they'll like they'll uh usually have you know all their stuff with them like all that they have <laughs> their in their life in there. yeah which is you know not like yeah so the whole room will be like you're like walking over stuff and you're like you know like you're tri- like everything is just like everywhere you're, you feel like you have to clean up but it's like you know like you can't do much about it yeah so i think to for me that's like the most not like i want to say irritating but just like kind of like 
challenging like, more challenging yeah and almost like silly like it's like okay like it's this is really hard for me to like <laughs> do what i need to do because i'm like i can't even get to you you know because yeah, of your yeah. things and i can't get to doing what i need to do for I you or the other patients your juice, dude. because i'm just bringing you graham crackers the whole time so <laughs> yeah. kind of like that so it's almost like silly like i'm like okay like but i i know it's only for my shift and then yeah, you know yeah. i don't have to like that's honestly I, I learned a lot about nursing and things about nursing that i had no idea yeah um very informative for me so thank you so much for coming on lily um i'm i'm sure people listening are very happy that you came on and shared some info mm -hmm. and insight um so if you guys found this interesting and i'm sure many of you guys did please like subscribe share um share this with your friends um, who are interested in nursing um interesting interested in the medical field but don't know that they want to do nursing um i think lily was a good example of you know of somebody coming out of the state um and getting into school in in, in california so from georgia to california um anyways again lily thank you so much and have a good thank one thank you for having me yeah